Hey everybody, welcome to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. It's Saturday night. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope you guys are doing well. It's what we call a double lovety day around here at JMS Live. This is our second show of the day. Just a couple hours ago, I think about two or three hours ago, we had a great guest coming in from uh, what was, we thought, Ireland turned out to be Denmark. Yes, Joby Fox was here, great Irish musician, singer, songwriter, and founder of Refugee Rescue, helping the refugees who were in the boats and uh, in the water, uh, leaving the Greek islands and, and other places in the Mediterranean, helping them get to uh, you know safe land. What a beautiful thing. If you didn't see that episode, it was very poignant and very moving, and I encourage you to check that out. It was on our show today, just about two, three hours ago. That's for those of you who are watching live. Of course, we do our show is live. This is an entertainment lifestyle variety talk show series. We're sort of bringing back the lost art of conversation in the style of Dick Cavett and Johnny Carson, Dick Clark and uh, Murph Griffin, Mike Douglas. You know, the traditional uh, talk show hosts, Regis Philbin, some of the others, but with a modern vibe and a modern twist of today. We have an international audience who watches literally uh, proactively when i say proactive they comment they write they're on our facebook pages our instagram pages twitter at gym masters tv we've got a facebook group for this show called the gym masters show lovely hall on facebook they comment on youtube and they hear all the time it's our faithful lovely squad that's right last summer i said the show is a lot of light love and levity and i said that a little too fast. And I said, love it. And ever since that day, everybody has fallen in love with that phrase. It's part of our show now. You guys call me Mr. Lovity. This is Lovity Hall. You guys are Lovities, and I think it's really cool. So wherever you're watching around the world and whatever time of day it is, we welcome you to the JMS family. This is a show where, again, we're spreading some sunshine with inspiration, entertainment, and guests who come in from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, music, as well as comedy, sports, science, and nature, health, and wellness, inspiration and uh, everything in between celebrity friends and so much more speaking of celebrity friends wow we have a great guest who's actually a dear friend and he's returning this is his second visit here at the gym masters show live we've had some of our guests coming back uh twice and three times four times we recently had uh, damien mcginty from celtic thunder on for a second time and from glee uh, Colin Keegan from Celtic Thunder was just on recently for a second time. Tonight, we have wonderful, renowned Greek Mediterranean guitarist Pavlo here. He's going to play live. He's actually uh, on location from home. That's right. He is always on tour. He's always making stops at uh, the public television stations, and he's always at uh, concert venues. But uh, right now, he's got a little bit of a window, which worked out so beautiful for us here at the Gym Master Show Live, so we can have him back on the show. Because, you know, in a day or so, he's going to be flying all over the country because he's got a brand new uh, PBS special that uh, is absolutely brilliant, absolutely stunning. It's really been a labor of love, and it's been something that he told me about this, actually, uh, when we were airing live in Castoria and other specials on public television. And uh, he was in the studio. And as you guys know, I've known him for a long time. I've interviewed him on PBS. I've interviewed him for some of his concerts as well on stage. And he said it was a dream to film a concert event, you know, one of these once in a lifetime events in uh, Santorini, Greece. You know, he's uh, from Greece, uh, also Toronto, Canada, makes his home in the U.S. in uh, the Tampa, Florida area. And uh, wanted to go back home to the roots, to Greece, and uh, film in Santorini. And what a stunning concert. Uh, Daniel Emmett, of course, you know, uh, was with him as well, and so many others. Of course, all the great musicians. I've met all of them. We actually had dinner uh, after a uh, public television uh, shoot and concert event, uh, the great, great guys, great people. He's got a great team around him. His lovely wife, Sandra, and so many, you know, he's just got a, he's got a lot of love and support because he's a really talented guy and he wears his heart on the sleeve. And yes, we did break dishes in the studio as well. If you didn't see that first episode of the Gym Master Show Live where Pablo was my guest, go in the archives and you'll see some uh, tape re-rolled <laughs> of us breaking the dishes in the television studio <laughs> and so much more always great time when pablo's in uh, in house so he's just about to uh, go back out and uh, get on tour again 
which is very exciting. And we're going to show some clips uh, and we've got some photos. And also he's going to play live for us as well. So yes, renowned Greek and Mediterranean uh, guitarist extraordinaire Pablo is here on the Gym Masters Show Live, joining us in just a second. Let's say hello to some of our viewers or lovelies who are tuned in watching the Gym Masters Show Live from all around the world. It's so great to see you guys. Don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is the channel you're watching right now, which is Gym Masters TV. And when you do that, don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our episodes. And then got some 550 episodes available for your binge watching on our YouTube channel. So check that out. Also, uh, give this episode a like, you know, that uh, little like icon you see there on the YouTube channel. Give it a like and leave a comment for us as well. We would really love that. That helps us out big time. Many of you do that all the time with every episode. And boy, we thank you so much for doing that. It's cool when you do that. So do that for this episode as well. Pablo joining us in just a second. First, let's check in with some of our faithful, lovely viewers from around the world. Sherry Larson is watching from Kansas, USA. And she says, hello again, everyone. Uh, are you ready for round two? That's right. We call it a double lovely day when we do two shows in one day, which is what we're doing for all of you today. Uh, so Sherry's here. Mary Bishop is watching. She's also in Florida. She's in Pine Island, Florida, USA. She says, hello, Jim and lovely friends. Good to see you as well, Mary Bishop. These are the real faithful diehards. We also welcome everybody who's watching right now who isn't commenting in our live chat or who will be watching this later in the archives at Jim Masters TV. Uh, Merlin is watching in Ontario, Canada. Yes. And of course, uh, Pablo is from Toronto as well. Merlin says, good evening, Jim and all lovities. Good evening to you as well, Merlin. Dawn is here. Dawn is watching. Good to see you, Dawn. Welcome once again to the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. And uh, Merlin says, welcome, Pablo, fellow Ontarian to Lovity Hall. Love that. Linda is in Florida. Linda Odell, she's in St. Augustine. She says, good evening, Mr. Lovity. Good evening, Lovity. It's good to see you as well. Anne is here, and her accent is here from Southern California. She says, hello, everyone. This is the second show for her today as well. She's all excited. Everybody's all excited. Pablo is here. Uh, Linda says, looking mighty handsome as always, Jim. Thank you very much. I wish we can print some of these comments out and save them, press them in the broadcast career book. I uh, hope everyone is having a wonderful weekend. We sure are, and it's so good to see you here and everybody that is uh, watching from all around the world. Look, look at all these great comments. Kathleen Walker is tuning in live right now from New York City. She says, hey, Jim. Hi, everyone. Hope everyone had a good day. Absolutely, Kathleen. Again, you're back for the second show of the day, which I think is pretty cool. You are really a lovely. You sure are. And everybody that's here. Regina is here. Regina, welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live. Ready for your chat with Pablo, listening from New York City and watching from New York City. Good to see you, Regina. Hope you're doing well. Nice to see you back with us here on the Gym Master Show Live. Uh, Jen Barry, she's watching from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Hey, Jim, guest, love it is. Jen is in Slancha, which is an Irish toast. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. And everybody that's uh, tuning in and chiming in here, all these great comments that are piled up here. We'll uh, scatter some in as we go along here uh, during the conversation and all the entertainment we have uh, in store for all of you tonight. Thanks for all these great comments. Keep them coming. And again, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And don't forget as well to uh, give us a like and thumbs up on that YouTube channel as well. Here's another comment that just came in uh, from Christine Clifton in North Carolina, USA. Hi, Jim and all. Welcome, Pablo, to the show again. Uh, it will be a wonderful evening in Lovety Hall. Yes, you know, the whole Lovety thing is uh, since Pablo was here and he was here just before this Lovety wave started happening on the Gym Master Show Live, told him all about the Lovety and he's all into it. Chris is here checking in from North Bay, Ontario. Welcome, Chris. Nice to see you here on the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. And Sherry says, welcome, Pablo, as well. So again, as I mentioned, he is a superstar. He's a PBS star for sure. And he's been doing this for years. This is his true passion. He loves every second of what he does. He puts on an extraordinary show. You know, for being all instrumental, Pablo's Mediterranean music really speaks for itself. Over the span of his 20-year career, Pablo, the internationally renowned award-winning recording artist, performer, and songwriter, has released 
some 15 plus albums, including four, now five PBS TV concert specials. Born in Toronto to Greek parents, Pablo has made a name for himself by offering a music amalgam he simply calls Mediterranean music, a blend of Greek, flamenco, Latin, and even Balkan flavors wrapped in contemporary pop. And his music has taken him all around the world. Along the way, he's performed for royalty, the likes of Prince Charles, and worked and toured with artists such as Jose Feliciano, John Cicada, Olivia Newton-John, and even the tenors. And uh, it's never been more convincing. Pablo is a true world artist, and he's become famous for bringing every audience to their feet. And uh, he's, again, had a multitude of uh, specials, and we're really excited because he is debuting literally in about a week or so on public television in the United States, you know, check your local listings on your PBS station uh, for his uh, Santorini epic Congress. Uh, it's going to be a concert event that people can be talking about for a long time and a special because again, he, he really put so much heart and soul into this. Uh, it's been a dream of his uh, and his wife and his family for a long time. And he was able to do it even during this whole pandemic situation, which is absolutely extraordinary to be able to pull it off. So uh, check that out. Check your local listings. Uh, December is the kickoff and uh, it's going to be really, really cool. He is uh, comfortably positioned in his home in the Tampa, Florida area with his guitar. He doesn't go anywhere without that beautiful guitar. Let's welcome my buddy and yours. Pavlo to the Gym Master Show live for his return visit. Hey, Pavlo, welcome back, my friend. It's good hey, to Alan. see you. <laughs> you know, I'm like Samson. I, without my hair, without his hair, he's got no power. Without my guitar, I'm completely useless. So yeah, <laughs> I, I gotta have it in front of me. You know, speaking you gotta of hair, it. you've got fantastic hair. Oh my goodness! Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I look like I should be uh, part of your group, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Let me just strap the guitar on you and off we go. <laughs> and that's it. That's right. I'll MC and then I'll pluck the guitar and then I'll hand it off to you, the expert. A <laughs> couple of uh, loveties here. Hi, Pablo. Welcome back from Kathleen in New Hi, York Kathleen. City. She's all excited. Uh, Mary Bishop. Hi, Pablo. And welcome. She is Hi, in uh, Florida. Yeah, FLA. And welcome, Hi. Pablo. A salute from Jen Barry oh. in Allentown. Linda is watching in uh, Florida as well. St. Augustine, she says, yes. welcome, Pablo, to the Lovety Love Squad. St. Love St. Augustine. St. Augustine's a cool place, right? How's the uh, weather where you are right now? Is it still warm there in Tampa area? Well, let's see. It's uh, sunny, <laughs> warm, <laughs> like it is every day. I wish I was a weatherman here. You've got It's the same thing every single day. It's the same thing every <laughs> single day. <laughs> Probably a little different in Toronto right now, I don't doubt. No, it's uh, probably cold up there. <laughs> yeah, Chris says uh, hello from uh, North Bay, Ontario. North Bay, Ontario. Wow, hello, Chris. Isn't wow. that cool? Sherry Larson's in Kansas, USA. Welcome, hey, Pablo, Sherry. as well. And and you, you know, you visit all these places, right? When you're on I tour. Do. I mean, you say Kansas, I'm playing in Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing 100 cities next year, so I'll be hitting almost every city that everyone is uh is calling in and viewing from. So it I can't is. wait. They're doing concerts again. Can you believe it? Yes. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Do you still have that glass of wine? We'll toast to that. Yeah. We we made it through the other side of this craziness. Woo. Cheers, well, my yeah. friend. Cheers, yeah. my friend. Hmm. Very, very nice. Who wants to do regular TV? Here we can actually drink. You can actually have you can actually have the real thing. That's not high C juice in your glass, right? Oh, it's great. <laughs> oh, you know, it's so cool to see you again, my friend. Uh, you and I, you know, we go back and I encourage folks to see the previous episode. We showed all kinds of pictures from you know the times together and laughter in the studios and on stage and uh you're just somebody, what I've said before, why I like you and a few others that I've had an opportunity to, uh, you know, get to know further and we stay connected with through my work um, is you're the real deal. You know, you like to have fun. You're a skilled talent. I mean, you're a true pro. You're almost a perfectionist in certain ways. You're very exacting. But when you present it, it's so relaxed. It's so organic. It's so authentic. And it's so energized. You can tell Pablo, and I've seen you know I've seen you you know get off the stage and work the audience, and people are dancing in the audience, and you're playing guitar to them and everything. It's a full, total experience, 
and you're loving every second of it. You're really living your bliss right now, aren't you, my friend? I, I am. You know, honestly, like I feel so lucky, so privileged, you know, to do what I love every single day. And, you know, when I, when I visit all the different cities and I, you know, I go from theater to theater and people are there to see the show and they're carving out time of their life to be with me. So that concept is pretty astonishing when you think about it. So you're absolutely going to, you're, you're, believe me, I'm going to be playing up to 150% of my ability every single night, you know, wherever I am, because I don't take that for granted, you know, and I love the play. I love playing the music that I've written over my lifetime. And I'm so appreciative that everyone's out in the audience, you know, coming to the shows. Like, how lucky am I? Yeah. Think about that. <laughs> <Whoppa>! <laughs> you know? I don't think anybody says Opa like you do. <laughs> and we and for those who didn't see the episode, go back and watch uh, when uh, he was on. We've broken a couple of plates live in the studio yeah. and, and scared some of the staff because they thought it was the good China for the uh, board members upstairs. But no, it... <laughs> uh, I would have broken plates tonight, but the supply chain has run out. So, yeah. Los Angeles, I think. So, but Nobody you... has broken more plates in the United <laughs> States than this man right here live on television. Yeah. Have you I'm applied? I'm proud of that, but it's true. <laughs> Have you applied for the Guinness Book of Records at all? Because I think you should. <laughs> Anne's in Southern California. She says, great to see you, Pavlo. Hi, Anne. And uh, Regina says, hey, Pavlo, I have the plates ready to break. There you go. Thank <laughs> so you, she, Regina. Somehow she's got a, a contact. She was able to break that supply chain. We need to hang out with Regina so go. we can get our paper towels and all the other stuff we need, <laughs> our Christmas gifts. <laughs> exactly. Christine right. Clifton says, Pavlo, welcome to JMS Live tonight. So great you could join us this Thank evening. You. And Thank cheers you. as well. Well, uh, Merlin in Ontario says, how many guitars do you have and which one is your favorite? Whew, that's a great question. Um, so as many of you probably know, um, I give away my guitar every night in concert. The one that I play on stage, I give to someone in the audience. Um, so I don't have many. I probably have, usually have about 15 or 20 on hand, but I give them away every single night. You know, uh, I used to have about 100. And that's when, that was about seven, eight years ago. And that's when I realized I don't need a hundred guitars, you know? So I started to give them away for fun every night. And I just loved the feeling of doing that. So yeah, I've only got about 15 or 20 on hand, but I give them away every single night. So. You really do, which surprises people. I've been there and I've seen it and it's incredible. The reaction people are like bowled over. They're shocked. They, <laughs> you know, they're taken back. They, they, don't believe it. At first, I've even seen some like, no, you can't. This is this isn't real. You're not really giving me. It's really true. I know. It. And it's and it's absolutely incredible. Well, you know, I, I call it the gift of music. And what it is, is I just simply am trying to put like my as you know, Jim, my my concerts are about positivity. It's about yes. being uplifted. And, you know, when people leave the concerts happy and uplifted, it makes me feel good. You know, yes. and the guitar giveaway is part of that. I just believe, I truly believe that the world needs more guitars. So yeah. in my humble little way, every night I give away a guitar. And hopefully if it just brings two people together for a song over, you know, breakfast at the kitchen table, it makes me feel like I've done something good in my life. At least that, you know, spreading. Yes. That's all. That's all it is. You know? Yeah. That's like what we call it here. It's lovity. You're spreading the lovity around lovity. the world. Lovity. I love lovity. Isn't that cool? Yes, that's <laughs> You got Opa and I got Lovity. We're good. <laughs> it, it's uh, no, that's the key. You've got this zest, this this uh, energy that's very infectious and infectious, you know, in the studios, but also on stage and with the audience and the viewers at home. Uh, where does that come from? You know, where does this zest for everything come from, Pablo? You, you know, um, so I, I was born um, in Toronto uh, from Greek parents. Both my parents are from uh, Castoria which is where I did one of my PBS. Yeah. Projects. So I grew up in a very um, festive household, you know, like when we were really young, didn't have much, you know, typical immigrants. My parents came, you know, my dad came to Canada with a shirt on his back and, and a dream, you know, and, nice. and he, he did quite well and uh, gave myself and my sister, you know, everything we ever needed. You know, we had food on the table and we always had music on. Didn't mm. matter. 
you know, music doesn't cost anything. You just got to right. the radio or turn on. In today's world, you just turn on YouTube. And you know, there it is. And there it is. And, and really, we just had such a, a beautiful, beautiful um, upbringing. And I, I always say this in my concerts. I feel lucky because I grew up in a very happy house. I, I really did. You know, I grew up in a happy house, in a festive house, where, you know, we'd be dancing and playing and eating. And I, I just, you know, I was a happy kid. So, honestly, when you see me on stage, I'm not a kid anymore. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man. I'm an older man. So, I'm just a happy man on stage, you know. Uh, that's it. Doing what I love to do. You know, I love positivity. Everyone's got their own journey in life. My journey right. is to spread positivity and to uplift people. You know, absolutely. So, that's I agree. Kaya says uh, he is so awesome. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. And Linda Odell says, Pablo, you're a lovety now. I love yeah. being a lovety. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Uh, we say there's Oscars, there's Emmys, there's Tonys, there's Peabody's, there's Grammys, all these awards. But when you get a, a lovey on the Gym Master Show live, Pablo, how does it make you feel? It, you it feel trumps everything. I love it. <laughs> Makes you feel good. I bet your feet are tingling right now, too, huh? They are. They are. <laughs> I think every time I say lovity, you should do that. <laughs> lovity. This is what it's at home. I love you all. Woo, I can't uh, wait to see you in your in your cities. I can't in wait your to see you. In a city near you, absolutely. And says, uh, "Be the person that uh, who makes others smile." That's right. That's that right. Thing, you know? Yeah, and Chris says, Pablo, are you coming to the north anytime soon? So I'm to Can on it. Canada, Canada, yeah. on North Bay and Sault Ste. Marie and Thunder Bay. It's all in the works. All in the Fine. works. Fantastic. Kathleen Walker says, love this. Smiles from Linda. They're all having a good time here. So uh, so you were saying, yeah, you know, you're you're inspiring uh, other people, but uh, you've been inspired along the way early on in your career, right? For those who might be watching, who are getting to know you for the very first time, because there's always new people discovering things. And they're saying, oh, this Pablo, I like Pablo, what he has to offer here. Tell us about uh, a little of that journey and how it led you to... Uh, being on national television in America. Wow. You know, I um, I innocently picked up a guitar at the age of 10 yeah. um, and fell immediately in love yeah. you know, with the instrument. And I, you know, I, I couldn't play it. I just knew that it felt right. You know, at the age of 10, what do you know? You know what your feelings are. You, know, you can't really express them. I just knew that this instrument in my hands feels right you know <clears throat> and that's it the, the journey began you know i i practiced 10 hours a day as a kid i was very fortunate to have a father who immediately um recognized my passion for this instrument and supported me supported me to this absolute day today you know i, I literally got a call and I, I this is the truth i got a call from my father two days ago who finally heard the whole album mm. I sent him the album, um, the new album, the, the Santorini album. And he said, like, and I, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm humbled when I said, my dad said to me, this is the best album you have ever recorded in your career. So for my dad to say that, oh, wow. my God. He's yeah. my biggest critic, believe me. If I hit a wrong note, he's the first one to tell me. He so would so tell you. So father to say that, yeah. I, was, I almost cried, to be honest with you. you know, I mean, oh, yeah. So like my, I was lucky. I, I, I'm so lucky that I had parents that supported me right from the get go. And then you know how it is, Jim. You know there's trials and tribulations throughout a career. I was always trying to find my sound. I, I dabbled in blues music. I, I studied classical guitar as a kid. Um, I was in rock bands. I was in a Rush tribute band. Being from Canada, of course, you have to be in a Rush tribute band. You know, and uh, and everything in between. And then finally. I wrote a song called uh, Santorini Sunset. So that was the first song that I wrote in this Mediterranean style that we now call Mediterranean style. And I finally started to find my sound, you know, my 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 thing, you know, that that felt right. And and I and and that was it. I mean, I just took it from there. This was in the nineties, of course. Um, 
I know I look incredibly young under all these lights here. But, well, of course. <laughs> but that, that's where it started. And I, I started to write music in that vein, in that genre. <clears throat> and here we are, 15 albums later, four PBS specials later. And uh, I get to do uh, what I love. I, you know, every note that I play, <clears throat> honestly, it comes right deep inside of me. I, I enjoy it. <clears throat> I don't take it for granted. And I, I feel, I feel again, I feel privileged. I feel privileged to, to be able to do that and play my music for everyone, you know. Yeah, that's Not incredible. Nutshell, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's the abbreviated version. Yeah. But uh, this concert that you have, uh, as I was telling the audience in the yeah. introduction, oh. is something that you have dreamed about for a long time. And you said, nothing's going to stop us, even a pandemic. We're going to find a way to do this because it's in my heart. It's in my soul. It's ha Nothing's been done in this way, shape, and form, and people are going to love it. Tell us about the, I sort of know because you told me, you know, privately off air, but tell us, the audience watching around the world, some of the early germ of the idea, the inspiration, putting it all together. What is it like? putting something like this that you've dreamed of for years together, that process, and how were you able to make it happen, especially during the crazy times we're in now, Pablo? Well, Santorini was a dream of mine for many, many years, you know. Organizing it, it was, uh, it's about, it was about seven years in the making. And, it, you know, so before the pandemic hit, we were supposed to do it last year and everything was fine. And honestly, I turned to my wife in January of 2020. I said to my wife, wow, everything is just so organized. Everything just feels so regular and so easy. This is going to be great. A month later, <laughs> the pandemic. Boom. And just erased, you know, not let alone the 65 sold out concerts I had across North America. All yes. Got but my PBS special in Santorini, seven years in the making. I had yeah. talking to mayors, ministers of culture. I mean, the whole gamut. And it just disappeared. Like, it just vanished. And just so it was devastating, you know. But yeah. this past summer, uh, again, I was advised by many to say, you know what? Wait one more year because the pandemic is still here. And I said, no, you know what? I'm going to go for it. And you know, we're following all protocols, you know, everything. You know, we all had to be vaccinated to even enter into Greece. So we did everything by the book, you know, everything safely. And we finally got to Santorini. And I had a team of 50 people um, come from Athens because Santorini is an island. There's nothing there. Like, you have to bring everything there. And, of course, you know me. I, I think of great ideas and the logistics of it all <laughs> comes later. So I uh, brought the whole team of 50 there. And literally one week before... The, the government of Greece shut down Mykonos, which is a neighboring island, and they said that they're about to shut down Santorini. I mean, I, I, I didn't know what to do. At that point, if they had canceled it, I had 50 people on the island ready to go. you team. ready to go, yeah. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even, like, I, I, I basically got up every morning at 5 a.m. I think I put this on, on my Facebook post. And I started to run. I, I never run, you know, and I started to run. I didn't know what to do with myself. And anyway, miraculously, they did not shut down Sandorini. The show went on and it was my dream concert of a lifetime. It really was. So for me to be able to share, you know, you have to understand, like, I'm the first artist in history to ever do this, to ever bring a show from one of the most sought out locations on the planet. Yeah. Any screen in the world, let alone PBS. PBS is the first network to air this kind of show. I know now why it's so difficult. You know, aside from the, the pandemic and all that, it's an island. I had to I had to bring everything. So there's no venue there. So what I did is I you and you'll you, you might recognize it on screen, but I'll tell you so that you know the behind the scenes. It was a helipad. So basically, where they land the helicopters, I rented that out. And I brought in the entire staging. So I turned it into a concert venue. Because <laughs> there's no concert venue there, right? So for me to have the Mediterranean behind me and have the Caldera, the cliffs of Santorini behind me, I had to find the flat piece of land on the cliff. So that was the only way to do it. I rented the, where they land the helicopters. I rented that piece of property and I turned it into a concert stage. And that's Pavel live in Santorini. So 
Is that not unbelievable to be able to have done all of that in, in you know, in this situation? The was, logistics must have been extraordinary. It, it was extraordinary, you know, and, and like like I said, even from the tables to the stage, to the lighting, to the cameras, to the to the candles that you see, everything had to come from the mainland. You know, all of I had nine cargo trucks on the cargo ships come to bring all this stuff for me. It, it was crazy. I mean, now that I think about it, I, I, I think that I'm a little bit, tiny bit kind of crazy because <laughs> I mean, you know, what can I, and, and, and at any point, anything can go wrong, you know, and, and, and many things did, but you know, you handle what happens in front of you and you just keep moving forward, you know, but the outcome, the, it is what, it, it was all worth it because honestly, to be on stage on the island of Santorini and to have Fira behind you, the white and blue structures and the ocean, the Mediterranean behind you, and to be able to play my music where I totally feel, I've always said this, if I ever, if I ever could put images to the songs that I write, it's the images that you're going to see in this next PBS special in Santorini. You know? So that's why I really wanted to do it. So for that background, I had to go through an insane amount of uh, obstacles and hurdles. But we did it. We actually but you did it. did and it, I, I, yeah. But we did it. We did it. <laughs> and what was that like when you when you finished it? That, you know, that must have been incredible. A real high for everybody. Man, it was unbelievable, you know, really, you know. Probably I, very I, emotional, too. It was. It was emotional and, you know, like, you know, musicians are a strange breed, you know. It, the ones that I know, we don't really do it for money because if you want to do anything for money, there's many other avenues you can go to make money. We do this because we love it. You know, we love it. I, you know, and in my case, you know, I, I compose everything that I play. So for me to be on the cliffs of Santorini, playing Santorini Sunset, you know, a song that I wrote there eons ago, it's just such a special moment, you know, and, and that's what it's all about for me is having those special memories and the special moments and, and the, the, the opportunity that I'm given to share my music with, with everyone, you know, at home and to have this relationship with PBS. I mean, I have an entire network behind the career of Pavlo. I mean, that's crazy. I don't even know if I deserve that, to be honest with you. <laughs> but anyway, I, I feel very lucky. You know, I, I can't want to see this show honestly it's going to be yeah incredible. it's going to be fantastic and you've sent us a little uh, promo clip here that we're going to show oh, uh and and thanks for sending it we appreciate that uh pavlo and uh let's take a look at it it's a little promo for the upcoming special i'll actually myself be in the public television studios uh a week from uh yesterday this coming friday on behalf of uh public television and with this special as well, we'll be in Hartford actually at the Connecticut public television studios, um, praising and singing and, uh, you know, revving up the troops uh, in support of this special. So really looking forward to that as always, always have a good time, but here is a little snippet, a little preview of what to look for with this amazing special with none other than Pavlo and the gang live in uh, Santorini, beautiful Santorini, Greece. One of the world's most iconic guitarists from one of the most beautiful spots in the world. Pablo, live in Santorini. Join Pablo and his special guests as he brings his Mediterranean feel-good music home to the Greek islands. A once in a lifetime evening of music and memories. Pablo, live in Santorini. Looking good, my friend. Looking good, my friend. <laughs> I'm still amazed watching. I can't believe I was yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, it's such a beautiful spot on this planet. And uh, uh, 
Santorini is a very beautiful, beautiful place. And you mentioned a few things of, as far as why you selected it. What are some other reasons why you chose that very magical place, Pablo? Well, in 19, I didn't want to say, we'll just call it the 90s, okay? In the 90s, I was on the island of Santorini and I wrote Santorini Sunset. So that's where really the Pablo sound began. That's where it was born, you know? And it was always, even from back then, I mean, I didn't even, you know, I didn't even think I could even get on PBS at that point, but I've always uh, wanted to return to the island. And, you know, when I saw that there might be an opportunity to actually go back and do a concert from the absolute birthplace of my sound, it was like, you know, it's a dream. It's a really, yeah. a dream, you know? and then to do it, you know, and that that's like, and that could have been anywhere, you know, but, the fact is, Santorini is one of the most, it's a bucket list destination, one yeah. of the top five in the world, you know? Yeah. So to be able to also share that beautiful imagery, that beautiful, you know, pictures and video of that gorgeous island, the white and blue structures. Um, it just, it's just, it was just such a perfect fit, you know? It really was, you know? Mm. Incredible. How long did it take? How many days to, you know, when you were there filming with the crew, how many days from, you know, the first note to uh, that's a wrap? Well, I, I uh, was there for two months. That's I right. Had, yeah. Yeah. I had to be there for two months to set it all up. Um, and then uh, the show, we did two concerts, two shows. The setup was four days. And, uh, and for those of you that were there, there were people that actually flew from all over the world, to be there, which I mean, again, I mean, humbled to my core. Unbelievable. From the States, from Canada, from Poland, from England, all over the place to be part of that show. So, so whoever, whoever was there knew that it was quite windy that day. So we did two shows, two shows, two days. The one night, it was so windy, we couldn't even use any footage. So all of that really is from one show, from one of the shows. You know? Wow. Um, yeah. And, you know, it was, <laughs> again, I, I, got, I have to pinch myself because I still can't even believe we did it. I feel like I, I went into Greece quietly. I filmed this major television show, and then I quietly left. <laughs> you know? That's how, you know, because, oh, my goodness. I mean, it, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, you wanted but it to really. It. Worth it. But worth it, right. And you, you had a certain vision and a certain mission and a certain way and look and feel. And you wanted people to be really, you know, impacted by it. And uh, they certainly will be. I, I love the, uh, that's the cover of the DVD. That's a great shot, huh? Yeah. yeah. With my blue <laughs> suit. <laughs> very nice. That's a very sharp uh, sport coat there, my friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And this CD here. The I last mean, that's a great song, shot. Well, the last song. So that's in an infinity pool, as many people know. Yes. Uh, so those pools, the beautiful pools. And the the property that we recorded this on was a place called the uh, the Ambassador. And they gave me permission to actually go and film one of the songs with my legs in the water. So the finale of the whole show is just me and my guitar uh, playing a solo piece in the pool. So. Is that, I mean, you can only do it in Santorini, of course. You, know. you can only do that. <laughs> That's incredible. That really is in incredible, huh? Um, wow. I mean, and just knowing about this and what this was like for you. Um, so it's uh, debuting and uh, people are going to get a chance to, to see it and enjoy it. Yes. Um, are you already thinking about the next project and then things done. thereafter? Of course, it's done. It's done already? <laughs> it's done in the sense of I know what I want to do. Um, you know me, I always think of great ideas and then I think about the logistics later. So in the summer of 2023, the next special will be uh, at the Acropolis. It'll be Pavlo live at the Acropolis in Athens. That's the next one. Wow. <laughs> I mean, soaring to new heights, it's just incredible, huh? It just grows. Well, again, you know, again, it's just one of those, it's a it's a dream venue. It's only yes. 12 years old. And of course, yeah. as many people know, um, Yanni did Yanni Live in the Acropolis. At yes, I remember that. You know, so I thought, you know what? 30 years later, I think it's time to do Pavlo Live at the Acropolis. Pavlo, yeah. That's I mean, I get goosebumps just thinking about just it. Just thinking about it, right? <laughs> you 
Do you uh you want to play something for the audience? I know you got that guitar. Yeah, you know what? But I'll just play a little snippet of Santorini Sunset. This is the yeah. song I wrote on the island Santorini that started my my entire journey of awesome. Uh, you know. Awesome. That is really nice. And you've, you've earned that swig there. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. 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 My friend, everybody raise their glasses. Yes. Cheers. 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 Mm. Of course, you know, live I'm joined by my killer band. I've got some players yes. that have been listening for, for many, many decades. And, well, two decades. I don't say many, many decades. Isn't it? <laughs> A thousand years old, you know, but. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just honestly, I just can't wait to get back out on the road, touring, being in concert halls, playing for everyone. You know, uh, so privileged to have Gino Marizio uh, as my percussionist. He's been with me for 21 years, if you can imagine. You know, that's unbelievable. It's crazy. Curtis Freeman on bass has been with me for a decade, you know, and I, I'm going to have great guests. And speaking of the guests, I mean, the guests on the TV show. Jim, I mean, I, I I was just so honored, you know. I had a, a wide array of, of of musicians and artists. Daniel Emmett on too, right? Daniel Emmett. I mean, you want to talk about the future of the tenors in the world? Daniel Emmett is going to be a superstar, and I'm the first person to say it right here. Daniel was a finalist on America's Got Talent, um, and uh, and is now working with Marie Osmond. He's doing an entire American tour with Marie Osmond starting December first. And uh, I met Daniel in Las Vegas. Uh, we hit it off. I invited him to Santorini literally two months before the show, and he accepted. Thank God he accepted. And, yeah. he, and he came to Santorini and just did some of the most incredible renditions of uh, some amazing songs. Benesse, uh, another PBS uh, a colleague. P Benesse is a PBS superstar. Many, many PBS specials. He's, he, he's based out of Los Angeles. Uh, but his specials are from all over the world. And he, um, he if you see the show, he's the tall six foot four fellow with the long flowing hair. Something some like Jim's hair, long and flowing. And, you know, the wind was blowing in his hair as he was playing. It was just such an honor to share the stage with Vanessa. He was there with me. Um, I have the had the one, one of the world's greatest, uh, most accomplished accordion players, Zoe Tigandaya. Wow. She just wrote the film score for a Hollywood new movie that was just released last week. Um, she really? Yeah, she's an, a composer and an incredible player. I mean, everyone will see her, believe she's incredible. Um, I had Lazos Ioannidis, who was in Live in Casoria, the Lira player. Yes. He was as well. Grenville Pinto on violin flew from Toronto to Greece to meet me there, and we did this show. Just incredible, incredible guests, you know, and um, – just I, I can't wait to share the music with everyone. I really can't. You know, I, I, I I've been stuck in this house for a year and a half. I gotta get out. Yeah, <laughs> go stir crazy. <laughs> what we we've asked? I've asked some of the guests. You know, yeah. we've been through some really extraordinary times, especially you know, it was just sort of beginning when you and I chatted last here. You know, on the Gym Master Show live, and haven't even been able to be in the same studio or zip code since because of pandemic and studios closed and the whole world shut down. How have you been? What are some things that you've been doing? Obviously the special and you put your heart and soul in this, this fabulous special, but what are some other things you and the family have done to get through? I keep saying, I hope we uh, sort of lift out of this arise from the ashes, kinder, more empathetic, more unified, more loving uh, yeah. because a lot of people are pausing right now, taking a look at their lives and they're saying, 
what do I want to do different? What do I want to want to do that really inspires me and inspires other people? What do I want to do with the next chapters of my life? And it's been a great pause for a lot of people and yeah. time of reflection, of growth, of uh, like a renaissance and uh, of sorts. How has it changed you? And what are some things that you've been thinking about and doing and working on as well through all of this, Pablo? Well, you know, um, when it when when the pandemic first hit and everything got canceled, I, I've been touring since 1998. So I, I've been doing about 150 shows, 150 cities a year for like 20 years straight. Didn't really think about anything, just kept going, you know, releasing albums when I had breaks in my schedule and then just kept going forward. And when the pandemic hit, um, I was in kind of shock. I have to be honest with you. I was kind of in shock. I didn't know what to do with my, I mean, the first couple of weeks were great. They were fun. I would, you know, walk the dog and go swimming and play tennis. And then after a couple of weeks, I was like in almost in shock. Like, well, what would I do? I mean, I'm, I'm usually on an airplane going somewhere, you know? And so it was an incredible adjustment for me, but I am grateful. I mean, I, I choose to be positive about it. And I know a lot of people got depressed. And I, you know, I, maybe I had a little bit of that too. I mean, all of us had a certain amount of depression when this kind of thing hit. But, uh, but I choose to be positive. I want to be positive about it. And what can I do to, you know, create some good out of it? You know, and for me, in, in the beginning, it was about my health. I just wanted to, to hone in on my health. And I started to run and I started to play tennis every day and I started to swim every day. Just trying to keep an uplifted, you know, spirit about it all, you know, spend a lot of time with my family. But as many of you know, like my, my wife and my, my younger daughter, my, my, my wife, Sandra, homeschools my daughter. Right. So they travel with me anyway. It's not like I never seen them when I'm on the road. They're with me, you know. So it's not right. like we, you know, it's not like people say they want to spend more time with their family. Well, our family's together all the time anyway. But it was nice to actually spend it together at home. That's something that I never do, you know. I live in Tampa, Florida, but... Under normal years, I'm only here about five or six weeks of the year. That's it. The rest is, you know, traveling and playing concerts. So it was the first time ever that I was actually home for over a year. I, I got to know my my uh, neighbors. Like I know all my neighbors now, all of them. You know, I didn't know anyone before. You know, so it's awesome. Have you mowed any of their lawns for them too? Or <laughs> I have. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm a great cheerleader. So when they're doing, I'm right there with them. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Good you job, know? Stan. <laughs> but and, and I'm blessed actually. I'm blessed because I live around wonderful people, you know. But it was not, that was a part of you know. I, I really enjoyed my visits to to uh, Publix. You know, I never, never realized yeah. that I actually really enjoy grocery shopping. You know, grocery I know shopping. it sounds crazy, but I'm being yeah. honest. Some I of really the simple enjoyed, things in life. Yeah, I loved it. You know, and right. even if I only had to pick up peanut butter, I'd still go across every single aisle. I just loved the routine of it. You know. You know, so I, I, I try to turn it into a positive for me. That's all, you know, so. And then we got onto the show and, you know, we got on to uh, getting ready for Sadurini, which I started to prepare, you know, January of 2021, my second attempt at it and, and we got it done. To give people more of a real appreciation and perspective of all the work that went into it in these unprecedented times, uh, some more about the logistics, just in terms of, you know, there was all these lockdowns and restrictions and can't fly here and can't do this. And everybody had to be six feet apart and all these different things. So how were you, you must've really had to you know, dig in extra deep because to just pull something like that off under normal conditions is a, you know, a heroic feat, but yeah. to do it during the time uh, like this that we're all experiencing is doubly heroic. Uh, so how were you able to work with the team and make sure all those I's were dotted and T's were crossed and everything, you know, met all the protocols and all that stuff too, yeah. giving people an understanding of what you really not only put into it on the stage with the performance, but behind yeah. the scenes, all the extra care and attention and work that had to be done to make sure everything followed, uh, you know, the craziness of what's been yeah. going on. Yeah, it was uh, it was incredibly complex. I mean, I, I kind of just laugh it off a little bit, you know, but uh, really, honestly, it was incredibly complex. I don't know if people realize this. Like, I actually produce the shows. So I create them. I, I come up with a concept. I hire all the staff. It's not like I have someone else that sort of does it all. I hire the directors. I hire the photographers. Like, I hire everybody, one by one, 
all of them, you know. And I do it not because, like, I do it out of, how do I say it? I, I, I don't think I'm good at it. I just do it because it's a necessity to be able to, you know, how do I say it? To be able to bring my music to the world and my shows to the world in a way that I want to bring it. So in order to do that, I have to control everything. So I produce these shows. So I had to go, I mean, the insurance involved, the, I had, you know, everyone had to be vaccinated, like just to get to the, just to get to my show, to give you an example, you had to be vaccinated just to get into the country. Then right. fly from Athens to the, again, this is an island. This is, a, this, you know, there's nothing there. It's just an island with beautiful structures, but to put on a major television show, there's nothing there. I had to bring everything from Athens. So, and, and other cities across the Greece. So everyone, for them to get, even if once you got into Greece, just to get to the island, you had to be vaccinated and you had to show a negative test. To get into my concert, whether you worked my concert or whether you were a, a fan attended the concert, again, not just vaccinated, but you had to, uh, had to have a COVID test at the entrance of the concert. <laughs> you know, so... At one point, I was joking, but it's probably true. At that very moment, my concert was the most COVID-free place on the planet. Yeah. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to get to unless you went through vigorous testing and being vaccinated just to get to that show, you know? Yeah. And that's why, I mean, when I say people came in from Poland and Germany and England and America and Canada, the journey that these people took, I don't want to, they're not my fans, they're my friends, you know? For the journey they took to get there to see me, how lucky am I? Are you kidding me? You know, yeah. so I mean, there, there was a lot that went on. You know, there was, you know, there was part of the crew, I think out of the 50, we had at least three or four that tested negative getting onto the ship from Athens to Santorini. So they had to be replaced on the spot. You know, so a lot of, of that kind of stuff. I got calls in the middle of the night, three days before the show, when the, 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 the company that brought my staging actually said to me, we're going to have to lose 10 square feet of the stage. And I said, why? Because the truck is too heavy. I mean, the calls that I was getting, you know, I said, you know what? Don't worry. Cut off 10 feet of the stage. I don't care. Just bring me a stage. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> many things that went on. But, yeah, it was it was difficult. It was difficult. And really, all of what what is that all for? All that is for me to have the opportunity to present my music in a way that I wanted people to to absorb and to and to and to you know experience. What do you do to um, DM to to relax? To like uh, Jen Barry asks. Uh, and sometimes we ask it during the show. For me, you know, I grew up near the ocean. The ocean is a very uh, Zen place for me. I'm always swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing it. You know, I'm always in it. They got to drag me out. But for you, um, where does Pavlo go? I know you can be Zen and in the zone. Like when I do my work in television, radio, and I'm on the air and I'm doing all of this, it looks calm, it looks easy, but it's like a sport to me. I mean, it's like everything's on fire. The all the cylinders are firing, it, the adrenaline, but it comes across calm and, and easy. Um, yeah. So that's sort of Zen too, and in the zone. I know you're in the zone when you're, you know, in the recording studio, when you're on stage, when you're on location, when you're meeting people. Uh, what's another Zen place where you're sort of away from the limelight? Where do you go? What do you do to regroup, reboot, refresh, so you can get back out of the gate and uh, take on the world again, Pablo? So this might seem odd to some of you, um, but a lot of you that do know me or have been following me for years will probably know this answer already. Of course, I love the ocean and I love, you know, I love being up in the mountains when I go to visit my family in Greece. But the problem with those scenarios are I have to get to them for that to happen. And because I do so many shows, I have found a way, no matter what city I am, no matter what country I'm in, I have found a way to do that almost on a daily basis. And what I do <laughs> is I love coffee. So what I do is I go in every morning, no matter where I am, with my bandmates, and we Google out all the local coffee shops and I, you know and, and I, I try to go to family run coffee shops I really do um, I, I you know I, I don't I try to stay away from the the, the big chain multi-conglomerate companies and I try to find and the local coffee shops 
cafes and uh and i go there and i have a coffee and some days it's 10 minutes of bliss and other days you know like here in tampa uh, when i'm home i go to this beautiful place called buttermilk provisions here in tampa florida um and i just go there and i spend 10 minutes 20 minutes well, how much time i have 30 minutes um and i just have my coffee and i just sort of reboot is that kind of crazy? I, I don't know. It's not that exotic, but that's what I do. I, I, I try to find a beautiful cafe, no matter what city I'm in. And I just take a few minutes for myself to regroup, have a beautiful cup of coffee and think about what I'm going to do that day. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And that's a cool thing. Um, you got to have those moments. You got to have those moments, yeah. especially when you're always out there and you're always, you're a giver. I'm a giver too, but you're a giver. I've seen you do your, you go beyond, you go beyond. And that's a cool thing. And that's, that's a desire that you have built in. Some of it may be passed down through the family, but it's built into the essence of who you are, Pablo, to you're a storyteller, you're a collaborator, you're a creative communicator you need, you, you don't just want, you need to be out there creating. You need to be out there amongst people. You need to hear the roar of the crowd and know that they're really appreciating all the effort, the work, and you're, you're lifting them up and taking them away from the troubles of their day. And through these fabulous concerts, taking them to places maybe they've only dreamed of being able to go to, and you're taking them through music, you know, song and melody and, and visualizations. And it really is an extraordinary thing. So you're getting a chance to express who Pablo is, which I, I am so in tune with that because that's what I do in my professional work on television and radio. And that's what this series actually, even more on a deeper level, has allowed me to do is just express the essence of who I am through the communication, through hosting these and producing these shows, or you know, interacting with the viewers, the guests. You're living that as well, too. You're having an opportunity to really show the world, you know, who you are and uh, the contributions you want to make to the world through inspiring and positivity and great music, right? Yeah, you know, like, it's such a, you know, um, I always say that, you know, I'm a guitar player, but really this is just my tool of engagement. You know, that's, that's all it really is. And for me to be in a room with them, like, you know, I, you know, I did a couple of live stream concerts during the pandemic out of Las Vegas, and it was fun. You know, we had people from all over the world tune in, and it was great. But there is nothing like being in a room. And I don't care if it's a room of 5,000 seats, 500 seats. It doesn't matter. We're in the same room. The energy that happens in that room, you know, is just something that you cannot replace. You, you can't replace it, you know. And I know there's this hologram you know, thing happening oh, yeah. concerts yeah. on stage with holograms. Yeah, it's, it's a cool concept, you know, but when you have real like beating hearts on yes. stage and in the audience, you can't replace that. You, you, you can't, you, you can't, you know, because there's a, there's something that you can't describe that happens an energy. You know, sometimes I'll play a note, that same note that I've played for 30 years, but that night it just happened that it just, you know, someone responded to it in a different way that I've never seen before, you know, or felt before, you know, it, you can't, you can't replace that, you, you know, and, you know, opa, you know, so like when, like, for example, when people, you know, email me and call me or when I meet them at the meet and greets and they say to me, you know, your music brought me through an incredible, terrible time in my life where, you know, I was ill or uplifted me, helped me get through my chemo or, or, you know, it helped me get over a terrible, you know, experience. Man, when I, when I hear this stuff, it's not about guitar playing. It's, it's about yeah. just connecting, you know. Right. And when I, my music, if my music can do that to someone, wow. Like, yeah. why, why would I be that lucky? I, I don't know. You know, I don't question. I just, I'm just grateful, you know. So that's the stuff that I'm really all about, you know, is, is sharing music, being in that room, making memories together. You know, uh, all that stuff. That's really what my journey in life is, you know. And you're living it. Tell us about that beautiful guitar that's in your hand there. Yeah. Well, it's a Pablo guitar, as it says Pablo. 
Um, and I have, of course, I have the Greek keys. <laughs> But really, it's it's a it's a guitar made uh, for me uh, by an incredible company called Godin, G O D I N, Godin, out of Montreal, Canada. So they make these guitars for me um, that uh, so that I can play my music, and then at the end of the night, I just give to someone in the audience, and we carry on. That's, That's really That's cool. cool. <laughs> you want to strum a little bit uh, more for the audience and those just yeah, joining us right now. Cool. When you flip the guitar, does it ever get stuck in the middle or not want to flip all the way? <laughs> yeah, sometimes I lose it, it goes flying, of course. So far, we're okay today, but you know. Yeah. I asked uh, <laughs> yeah, I asked another mutual friend, Maneid Nesbitt, you know, from Celtic Woman, uh, but also Rocktopia and Rock Me Abadeus and all these other incredible things she's a part of. And uh, you most know her as being that extraordinary, uh, you know, fiddle player, uh, Irish fiddler from Celtic woman, always jumping around, dancing around with her long blonde hair and really giving it 110%. And I asked, you know, this, did your hair ever get caught in, you know, the violin uh, in the strings? And she's like, Jim, all the time. <laughs> Sometimes I have to on stage just do some sort of a move of my head to get it to release. <laughs> What's well, one of the craziest things that's happened to you on stage? Don't have that problem, so. You don't have that problem. <laughs> I'm getting stuck anywhere. <laughs> What's one of the craziest things that has happened to you, either you know on tour on the way to somewhere or while on stage or or what have you? Uh, Many things. Oh my goodness. Um, where do I start? Um, how about, I remember once I had a concert in Nanaimo, BC, which is uh, Vancouver Island. So we had to catch a ferry from Vancouver over to the island to perform a concert. And <clears throat> I'll never make this mistake again. We booked the ferry for the same day. So the more, I thought we had lots of time, but then I didn't realize that, you know, if the waters are rough, well, they just cancel the ferries or they delay them. So here I am on the other side of this channel trying to get to, to the concert and they uh, delayed the uh, ship. And it was, you know, indefinite. We had to, you know, wait to see if that even would go across that day. Um, and eventually did. I literally got two the uh, theater, I think, 10 minutes before the show. Wow. And uh, we, we just jumped up on stage and just kept playing. They were plugging things in. We were playing the concert and the lights were coming on, you know. So, you know, yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's that crazy. But, yeah, that's one thing that just came to mind. It's just how sometimes, you know, that everything is so perfectly timed that yep. the slightest thing can happen, weather or whatever it is, a flat tire, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, you just got to go out there and, and make and magic see, happen. Yeah. I'm actually, I remember a time I was doing a, a concert in an outdoor venue uh, in Ohio. And I, I can't remember the city. It'll come to me at some point. And I remember <laughs> halfway through the concert, the power went out completely. Mm -hmm. And I had about a couple of thousand people in the, in the venue, uh, outdoor venues. It was like an amphitheater. And then someone quickly came to me and said, the, 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 uh, power uh grid just blew up like a couple yes of so, right this was not going to return at all i said oh my god we still got a half a concert to go so what i did is i just turned to the the gentleman in the band i said you know what grab your instruments they're acoustic thank god we're going to just walk up and down the aisles and finish off the concert basically playing acoustically 
for everyone as we walk through. And it actually was one of the most incredible evenings ever, you know. So there's always a solution. You just got to be open minded and just get out there and play. You know? That's what it is, right? <laughs> yeah. So you said uh, the upcoming year is going to be a spectacular year for you. What are some of the other cool things that are, you've got up your sleeve, Pablo? You have this now, you know, yeah. wrapping up 2021 with this incredible once in a lifetime situation with Santorini. And again, congratulations because yeah, you were telling me about this like two, three years ago, Jim, because I would ask you, you know, even we would have downtime after being in the studio, we would go in the back and meet, and, you know, talk about what we're going to talk about next and see how the response is and everything. I said, what are some of the things that you have coming up? And you said, Jim, I have this dream of Santorini. Um, and now you have this dream of the Acropolis. What are some other things like day to day that you have happening? Um, more well, music coming out that you're recording yeah, to? I mean, with the special, so I have obviously a corresponding DVD of the program, and then I also have a corresponding CD of the program. So the DVD is live in Santorini, the CD is called Pablo Santorini. So all that stuff is going to be released next year. The show airs on television starting on November the 27th across the country on PBS. Um, and then uh, I have uh, just booked a 100 city tour across America starting in January. I think the first show is Lancaster, California. Um, and then we hit everywhere. I mean, you know, right, right now, I think they've already um, uh, published 30 concerts, I believe, posted 30 concerts, but there's, there'll be 100. So there's 100 cities that we're playing next year all across America. So. Uh, that's what we're gearing up towards. We're gearing up to, for the tour and to be able to get out and uh, and play some new music for everybody. You know, and it's obviously been at least two years, if not more, in some cities that yeah, we haven't yeah. seen anyone. You know, so I'm really looking forward to that. Just doing what I've always done my entire life is just play some music, man. That's it. You know, I live a simple life, Jim. You know that. I know. So I I just I'm just trying to spread my music to as many people as I can while I'm here. That's it. That's my life. You know, it's exactly it's, you know, that's all I'm trying to do. You know? I mentioned in the introduction, you know, some of the style and the different uh, Mediterranean sounds and Latin sounds that you incorporate into your music. How do you describe the Pavlo sound? Is there a particular sound or does it sort of morph yeah. and change and you sort of then start to incorporate some other essences of other sounds and cultures into the mix as well as you go along? Of course. I mean, like many years ago, you know, we started, we categorized it Mediterranean style because I had a Greek background, but born and raised in Toronto. So I, I had a North American sensibility to everything, but I have a lot, I have very strong Greek roots. So that's how the, that, sound, that started. I, mean, I grew up with the bazooki, so I have bazooki players in my bands. You know, we have Latin percussion. So they called it Mediterranean style, you know, which I guess is a fair term, you know. Right. But honestly, over the years, because I've been able to travel to Japan, I've been able to travel to South Korea, I've been able to play in Germany and in Mexico and, you know, and Costa Rica and, you know, England, you know, I've been able to go to many countries and have been exposed to so many wonderful musicians and wonderful instruments that over the years, you know, I have 15 albums, you know, so I've incorporated the Indian sitar, the Chinese upright uru, the, you know, uh, the tabla, I've incorporated all kinds of instruments into my music over the years but really at the end of the day i call it feel good music mm -hmm. that's what i do my music i call it feel good i have all kinds of exotic instruments in the music but it's feel good music you know it's just making people feel good that's my journey you know somebody i think asked in uh, the comments live do you play other instruments as well separate from the guitar i mean i do Terribly, but yeah, <laughs> dabble into piano and, uh, you know, but yeah, I would, you know, I play the bazooki a little bit, but no, nah, guitar is what I play. You know, I, I can play a little bit of, of many instruments, but it's guitar that I play. And when I write my music, everything is written on the guitar and then I express it to the other, you know, instrumentalists in the band. Uh, but really it's, it's, it's guitar, you know. Merlin's asking in Canada, do you enjoy playing country and rock music and songs as well, country oh, and rock. Yeah, of course, I, I love playing everything. You know? <laughs> I mean, honestly, in terms of country music, 
a lot of the guitar players are the ones that really influenced me when I was young. You know, I got to tell you, you know, your timing is like a comedian. It really is. It's very much like a comedian because you'll do that with the guitar and then you go right in. And uh, as I was saying, you know, you just go right in. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm Rodney Dangerfield and Don Rickles would be very proud. <laughs> the timing is exactly like a comedian's timing. <laughs> I love, actually, I love comedy, to be honest with you. Sandra and I go to as much comedy as we can possibly go to. That's another great sort of uh, escape for us, you know, but I do love comedy. I have a lot of comedic friends, actually, um, uh, but the comedian friends. But anyway, I mean, uh, yeah, I love it all. You know, and I was saying with country music, you know, Chet Atkins, Roy Clark. I mean, oh, my goodness. Glenn Campbell, some of the best guitar players ever came out of the country music genre, you know. Um, and in rock bands, of course, I grew up playing in little rock. I was, you know, playing in rock bands as a kid. You know, I love it all. I, I truly do. I, I love any kind of music that moves me. That's it. You know, that's. I don't really care what style it is. You know, and I, and that's what I'm hoping that I do. I'm hoping that when people come to my concerts, yeah, that they you know that they feel good. That hopefully that it moves them in a certain way. You know. So if we were to check your car or your little boom box you got sitting to the left of you or your stereo, what have you, what would you be playing? What, what other kind of music do you like, Pablo? Oh, um, everything, everything and anything. Honestly, I have a nephew right now. His name is Jared Anthony. He just got signed to a major record deal. Wow, um, congratulations. That, 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 that worked with uh, um, Taylor Swift and, and all oh, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I can't remember the name of the companies, but um, and I love and he he's like a rapper slash storyteller. Uh, he's amazing. He writes songs from the heart. So that's what I'm listening to right now. Google him, Jared Anthony. He's going to be huge. <laughs> tell tell him about the show. We'll have him on as a guest. Absolutely. Yeah, I, have him on. He How actually did... just released his single. Wow. Uh, Paul Stanley's son played guitar on it. And the band Blue October, the guitar player. And oh, yeah, sure. Also played on his new single, brand new single. That so. is incredible. Now, does he come to you for advice or tips? You know, because you've been doing this for so many years, whether it's the business side of things or just handling the pressure of it all or, or what have you. Uh, yeah, we were so little bit? many times. You know, honestly, I'm very proud of him. He has really paved out his own path. Yeah. He really has, you know. Um, but I'm here. I'm here uh, to help him in any way I can. I can give advice to. But he really knows what he's doing. I love it when, you know, it doesn't matter the genre of music. I love it when uh, young artists really just take it by the reins and go for it. You know, and that's what he did. He, he's doing a genre of music that, you know, he loves, and he, he doesn't do what others think. He, he loves it. He enjoys it, and that's why he creates real, authentic music. You know, when you love yeah. what you do, which I love what I do. Yes. It's great authentic music, but you don't care what the audience size would be. Right. That's the difference. Like when I started playing guitar, I never thought I'd, you know, play in front of thousands of people. I never thought I'd have TV shows on TV. I just loved what I did and I was proud of what I did. The size of the audience doesn't matter. It's what matters is your authenticity in writing this music that feels good to you. You know, those are the, the artists that I think I gravitate to. And Jared's one of them. He's that authentic. You know? And, and people will find that and they will connect with it uh, because you're doing it authentically, which I think that's how I've always done my career is when you do it that way, uh, you know, people will gravitate to it because you're, you're touching them in certain ways that sometimes you don't even realize until they come up to you or they write to you and they say, whatever you said or did or performed really touched my heart and soul, which I think is uh, that's the icing on the cake in all of this, isn't it, Pablo? It is. It really is. It really is. Jen Barry in Pennsylvania says, if you were not a musician, what career would you choose other than what you do now? Whew, these are great questions. You've got a good audience here. <laughs> yeah. What would I do? Wow. Do you need another sip of the glass to answer that well, one? Yeah, let me yeah. have a sip of the I've got it. I like the way you did that. It was very reflective. <laughs> I would, uh, I would be a lawyer. You would be a lawyer. Yeah. So you like you know, fair and just. Well, and... you know what? It's interesting because I, I did study entertainment law, um, and not because I wanted to be a lawyer, 
I just wanted to understand. I mean, this is many years ago. I wanted to understand the the, the business part of of the music. All of this, yeah. And it really fared well for me because having a little bit of background in entertainment law to help me get through the contracts that I need to get through. And uh, it actually almost seems like I'm writing a contract every day, whether it's for a concert, whether it's for a PBS special, whether, you know, whether, whatever. So, uh, uh, and I do love, uh, I, I, I love the language. I love the power of language. I love the power of words, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go with that. I would, uh, I would, I would have been a lawyer. <laughs> I don't know if I would have been successful, but I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> so you're home now for this brief period. Uh, and that's when we were looking at the calendar, when we would be able to have you pop on, because I knew around this time things would start cooking as the uh, special starts rolling out on uh, national television on PBS. And again, congratulations, congratulations. It's something I know that you've worked, you and Sandra and everybody's worked so hard on. Um, so the holidays are coming up. Anything special uh, you're going to be doing for the holidays? Because uh, you're going you're gonna to be sort of working around all the visits and yeah. stations and everything. And then here come the holidays as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll be visiting stations across the country. Uh, you know, I'll be in Miami on Monday. I'm in Redding, California, like on Wednesday and then in Tampa and Orlando. Once I get all the, that done, um, I think I finish up on December the 9th. And then December the 9th, we fly to Canada and we're spending the Christmas with my parents and Sandra's parents. Very so nice. Toronto and Leamington area. You know where they are. Yeah. We'll Very beautiful. Christmas holidays. Because after that, we're on a 100 city tour. So I may not see anybody for a year. You know, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sherry said that uh, she did a little research. You're going to be in Buffalo, New York. Uh, the 22nd in 2022, because yes. uh, Kaya has been asking, are you going to be in New York? Are you yes. also going to be in the New York City area? Yes. Yeah, all that's in the works. Uh, Boston's about to be announced. New York will be announced in a few weeks. So, yes, we're working on all of those cities. And your website, too, will have uh, the list of everything, too. That will be on the website. Yeah. What's the website address? Pavlo.com. So easy. So easy. You know, it took me... <laughs> It took me over 20 years to finally get jimmasters.com. Yeah. Somebody else had it. A, a singer in England had it for years and years and years and years. And what at the last second, it would lapse, but then he would renew it. And just this summer during the pandemic, I was able to get a hold of it for after two decades. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I had to go through a company in the Netherlands that was holding it and all of this. But when you have it, it's, it's really... That's so persistent. It took you two decades, but you got it. <laughs> We don't give. I know it's it's passion. It's a, it's absolute passion, my friend, and and that's what you're all about. And um, I know you're going to be in Connecticut as well. And uh, for everybody watching, check the local PBS listings for their local public television stations as well to see, um, you know, when the airings are and the concerts and ticket opportunities and DVDs and everything else. Um, and I'm happy to, you know, to share that, uh, here and whatever I can do to, uh, you know, support you and, uh, continue to get the word out about you, because I think you're just a cool guy and you're very talented and you just bring something extra to the table, Pavlo. And I noticed that the minute I met you and I saw you doing your thing, Jane's watching live in Sweden and she gives claps and hearts. Oh, she, sweet. Yeah. Where it's pretty late into the hour. <laughs> You're the best, my friend. This was really, really awesome. I know we say we chat for about an hour. We did about an hour 20, which for you and I is like 10 minutes. Um, Who's counting? We could be here for five hours. I'm right. like, oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, absolutely. Uh, what would be something you want to say, maybe uh, in relation to the conversation we've had, uh, maybe? being on our show and or things that you'd like to say to the lovely audience that are watching right now as well, my friend. Well, you know, I just want, I know we all came out of this crazy period that we all witnessed for the first time in our lifetime. You know, it, it may not happen again for years, hopefully never happen again. But uh, I just want to say that I can truly tell you that I do believe in, in humanity. I, I really do, you know, and as, as much as, you know, there's so many bad things that happen, so much negativity, but I truly do believe that all humans are truly 
um, good in their heart, you know. And throughout the pandemic, I felt that. I felt yeah, that. Yeah. I felt that the, the human spirit is alive and well, you know. And I just want everyone to have an, an incredible time with their families during this beautiful upcoming holiday. Um, and be safe, you know. And then just enjoy each other's enjoy each other's company. And we'll see you at a Pavlo show. There you go. Right. <laughs> hey, you know who's here tonight? I don't know if he was here on the last show, but he usually pops up towards the latter part. And he just wanted to say, you, you knocked it out of the park, kid. And uh, he's a big fan. Mr. George Burns is with us tonight. Oh, I love George Burns. <laughs> <laughs> I love George Burns. There he is <laughs> with his cigar. There's a cigar in tow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, George. I appreciate George it. George loves it. He's always dapper. He's always dapper. Yes. So if you see him in the front row of a Pablo concert, you know where he came from. Love it. Love it. <laughs> this was uh, actually a family heirloom. My aunt, one of my mother's sisters, collected dolls and uh, got handed down to me. And this came out, I guess, as a collector's item when he turned 100. Mm -hmm. uh, so she, being a collector, had it. And there he is with a cigar. So, uh, you know, I've been throwing it on the show towards the end, put some smiles on people's faces. Just want to show you some of the other comments, my friend, coming in right now live from our audience. Thank Wichita. you for being here tonight, Pavlo. And uh, yeah, Wichita. I have Wichita on my calendar at Sherry Larson in Kansas. Oh. Uh, it's been great to see you again. Much success and Merry Christmas from Interkip, Ontario, Canada, oh. from Merlin. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Pavlo. You are a great oh, talent. Thank you. Kaya says, I support Pavlo. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And, and claps and cheers coming in from Jane. Good stuff from everybody that's watching live and everybody that's watching uh, later on. Pavlo, I hope the show met, uh, you know, whatever expectations you had, my friend. Oh, well, uh, you, it's always great to converse with you. Great conversation. A great hangout. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Lots of levity on the show coming your way, my friend. Jen Barry says, uh, Pavlo, love you. Come back soon. So they want you Thank back. You. So we'll uh, we'll definitely have you back and we'll keep, you know, abreast of all the cool things you're doing. Much success, uh, good health uh, to you and the family. Best of the holidays. Say hi to Sandra for me and everybody and and the gang, you know, your band, they're, they're fantastic. And uh, congratulations again to your nephew. That's very exciting. And uh, let's do one of our lovely cheers again, my friend. Best of everything to you. Do us uh, a nice Greek toast, maybe in Greek. Yes. Opa. There we go. Now it's so authentic. He's the real deal. Christine Clifton says, thanks for performing live for us tonight and for providing us with such an entertaining conversation. Wish you much continued success. Thanks. That's from Christine in North Carolina. And uh, Kaya says, good night, Pavlo, as good well. Night. My friend, this was absolutely awesome. We wish you again all the best and really appreciate all the time. You are the best. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the time with me as much as I certainly have with you. Absolutely. Thank you, Jim. God bless you. Thank you, my king. Bless you as well and the family. We'll chat again real soon, okay? Thank you. Have a great you wanna day. Hit a, you want to hit a chord for us before we go? Opa! Opa! Love it. -y. <laughs> Love it -y. <laughs> He's got great manual dexterity, too. <laughs> Cheers, my friend. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. Take care, Pavla. The best right here on the Gym Master Show Live. We uh, we knew. Well, let me take a sip, too. He took a couple of sips. Mm. Hey, we got this when we were on vacation recently in Newport, Rhode Island. Take life one cup at a time. Newport, Rhode Island. We were just on a mini uh, fall getaway in Newport and Providence and other areas along the coast. And been some wacky weather today in the area. Woo. But uh, really cool stuff, gang. And thank you very much for all the uh, comments live during the, uh, the conversation. This episode of the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. As you guys know, we always have an amazing time here on the show. We really, really do. I just want to show you a couple other things. If you haven't seen the episode with Anita Pointer and Ruth Pointer of the Pointer Sisters, they were here not that long ago. And boy, did we have an epic time. Lots of laughs, lots of memories with the Pointer Sisters. You can see that on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. The one and only comedy legend, the love goddess, 
Judy Tenuta was here with us recently. Check out that episode. Iconic TV and film actress and singer Linda Pearl was with us. She graced our presence recently on the Gym Master Show Live. David Osman of the famous Osmonds talking about dealing with MS and uh, also his love of family and his performances. He's also the host of Wonderama, the kids show. Singer David Osmond was on recently. You can see that episode here on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV as well. I uh, want to let you know a couple of other things that are happening. With the holidays approaching, we have some really cool shows coming up for you. We have from the Lorimar Vineyard and Winery. This is in California. This is a legendary place. Lots of celebrities go there. Um, founder and CEO Mark Mansfield is going to be with us for a special Saturday afternoon. Not Saturday. This is Saturday. We do so many of these shows, you lose track here. Monday, this coming Monday, for those of you watching live, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. We're going to be talking about holiday wines and perfect pairings with all of your meals for the holidays and your desserts and uh, appetizers and, and Christmas dinners and Hanukkah and New Year's and Thanksgiving. Uh, he's the expert. So it's uh, one of our lifestyle episodes of the Gym Master Show Live coming up this Monday with founder of the world famous Lorimar Winery in California, Temecula, Mark Mansfield is going to be with us. And then on Monday night, stand-up comedian extraordinaire. He was on Comedy Central and so much more. And actor Jason Salmon is going to be with us Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. So check that out. And we also have coming up on Tuesday, good friend of mine, Chef Chris Prosperi is going to be with us. It's going to be a foodie festival on that episode because we're going to be talking about holiday tips, uh, wonderful food recipes, getting ready for the holidays, preparing those meals, and so much more. He's an extraordinary chef. He owns actually a wonderful restaurant in Simsbury, Connecticut called Metro Beast, and uh, I've known him for years. We've actually done charity events uh, together uh, over the years. He's an extraordinary chef. He comes from a uh, foodie family. They've all been in the restaurant business for years. So he's the chef and uh, owner of this extraordinary restaurant. He's going to be with us on Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific live from uh, the restaurant. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And again, it's going to be a special lifestyle episode of the Gym Master Show Live. Where we're going to be talking about preparing for those upcoming holidays and all the foods. And it's going to be, I know we have a foodie audience here on the Gym Master Show Live. You guys love food. So do I. <laughs> And that's going to come up, a special episode uh, coming up on uh, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific Live. Then that Tuesday night, whew, there's a lot of double levity shows here from General Hospital. Elijah Crow is the character that uh, Dan White is currently playing on GH, on General Hospital, on the ABC television network here in the United States. He's also been on Law & Order. He does voices for uh, the animation video game Minecraft series and uh, on and on and on. He's been on Chicago Med and you name it. He's an extraordinary actor. He's with us on uh, Tuesday night, which is going to be extraordinary. We're going to look forward to, uh, to that coming up as well and so much more. Coming up on uh, December 1st, actor Nathan Butler is going to be with us as well. He's a cool guy. He's been really, really super busy. He was just... Uh, on set filming a new film starring in it. Uh, we're going to talk about that as well. If you didn't see when we celebrated uh, Marilyn Monroe, Cassandra Carroll was on with us recently on the Jim Masters show live. Jerry Mathers from Leave it to Beaver. He played Theodore Beaver Cleaver was on our show just a week or so ago. I also had a chance to meet him recently. I posted the photo on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter at Jim Masters TV. He's just a, he was a delight to have on the show, and he's a really genuine person, the one and only Jerry Mathers. If you didn't see that episode, check it out right here on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. Yeah, this hair is getting long, huh? <laughs> really long. It's kind of cool. All right, gang. Uh, again, don't forget to share the lovity. Tell everybody about our series, The Jim Masters Show Live. We always have a lot of fun. We're always entertained. We're inspiring. We have uh, live interaction with our viewers and so much more. You're watching our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We would absolutely love that. And when you do subscribe, click that red button 
And uh, also click the notification bell so you never miss any of the episodes of our series. And don't forget to like this episode and uh, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment for us as well. We would absolutely love that. Good time tonight. This was two shows today. A uh, guest from Ireland and a guest just now from Florida. Hey, Kathleen Walker. She just did our super chat. Thank you very much. You know, when we're live on the air um, on our YouTube channel with this series, and we've done about 550 episodes day in and day out of this incredible series since we launched it in May of 2020. Uh, there's something cool, which is called Super Chat. This actually helps support our series and all the work, time, and attention that goes into it. Thank you, Kathleen. That is really beautiful of you. Uh, have a great night and great day tomorrow. Jim, hugs. She knows my favorite color is green. I don't know if that just was happenstance, what just happened there, but really beautiful. And we thank you so very much, Kathleen, for your support of the work here at our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. Very beautiful of you. And I personally thank you, Kathleen. Very nice, very nice. And hugs back to you in New York City. Thank you, Jim, for all you do. You're a wonder. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Very beautiful of you to say that, Sherry Larson in uh, Kansas. And Jane in Sweden says, I agree, Sherry. Thank you very much. Strength in numbers. <laughs> Kaya says, this was the best ever. Thank you very much, Kaya. I hope you'll continue to watch our series right here at Jim Masters TV. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, we would love that. Tell all your friends about our show. We're here all the time. And we've done about 540 plus episodes. So you can watch them all here on our YouTube channel. They're all saved for you. So enjoy them. And it's nice to have you here, Kaya. Uh, Kaya, where are you watching from? I'd love to know, Kaya Stern Robinson, where you're watching from. I guess it's New York, right? Because uh, you mentioned New York earlier as far as wanting Pablo there. Is it uh, upstate New York? Is it uh, New York City? Is it... Uh, Westchester or Long Island? Where are you in uh, New York? Kathleen says, good night, lovely friends. You as well. Christine Clifton says, fun show tonight. And Pablo, all great lineups, Jim. See you all Monday and Tuesday for more double lovely show days. Good night and hugs. I know we've been really working hard. And uh, Kaya is Rockland County. Yes, we have, um, we have cousins that live in uh, New Windsor, New York. You know where New Windsor is, right? And that's uh, Rockland County as well. And you're in Tappan, New York. Tappan. I know where that is. We pass that uh, very often when we're driving through that area. Beautiful area to be in uh, New York State. Really, really nice. We're going to be going on another fall excursion tomorrow. We'll have to see what the weather is like. Here is again that um, DVD live in Santorini. And there's Pablo and then his new CD that's coming out. Cool story about... Uh, the infinity pool and how the last half of the concert his uh feet are dipped in that pool as he's playing guitar huh <laughs> if you didn't see the preview uh pablo sent to us which we appreciate uh, of the concert that's coming up the the actual pbs special which is absolutely beautiful um you can watch it again in the archives here on our youtube channel on this episode and um and again look uh in your guide to see when and what channel in your local area for uh, Pavlo uh, coming up with his live in uh, Santorini, Greece special coming up. I think he said November 27th is when it launches on PBS, and um, which is terrific. So check your local listings uh, for your PBS station, and they will be very happy to uh, have it listed there if it's uh, on. And um, yeah, and then it'll probably air other times as well, you know, into the new year. Uh, which is awesome. Really, really awesome. And Caius is awesome as well. <laughs> and um, Sherry Larson says, good night, everyone. See you all Monday. Have a great Sunday. You as well. You guys, we've been making Sunday family day and recoup day and sleep in day. And just because we've been doing these shows seven days a week since May of 2020. So pretty much, you know, we've got some Sunday shows coming back, but generally trying to take the Sundays just to breathe and spend some time with family and catch up on domestic things and, you know, and some levity here on this end. Uh, Jane says, thanks, Jim, for this great show. Thanks, Pavlo, for being here tonight. Hope you all come back. Uh, thank you, Jane in Sweden. Levity to you as well. And Kaya, thank you for being here from Tappan, New York. Uh, we hope you're here again. And all of you that are watching our 
series here that we love doing for all of you. Again, we thank our buddy Pablo for stopping by for the second time here on the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Cool guy, super talent, and uh, we had a ball tonight. Don't forget to smile, gang. Don't forget to share the levity. Don't forget to find your Zen place. Mine, of course, is the ocean. We talked a little bit about that with uh, Pablo tonight. Of course, number one is always with uh, loving family and friends. There's nothing more Zen than time, you know, with loving family and friends and people that I love in my life. And uh, the ocean, swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing it. I also love cycling and uh, tennis and writing and music and uh, baseball and um, food, you know, cooking and a whole bunch of cool things. And my work in television, radio, stage, and film over the years, another Zen place for me. So find your Zen place, gang, as we always talk about here on the Gym Masters Show, live entertainment lifestyle talk show series. And uh, share it with the world. Share your talents. Share your passion like Pablo does, and I try to as well. Um, share it with the world. Thank you, Pablo, for being here with us. Thanks, Jim, for a great show. Thank you, Jane, as well. I know it's late for you there in Sweden on a Saturday night. Here we are on a Saturday night and another wonderful show, about an hour and a half, too. That's a lot of levity and a lot of chatting, but it's always a blessing to be here with all of you, gang. It really, really is. Again, we thank you very much for all the time. We love you guys. And to continue to spread the word about our unique and very special show, it's not really just an interview show. This is an all-out entertainment lifestyle variety talk show series. Something for everybody. Lots of laughs. We always learn something uh, about life and how to do different things and think different ways about life, uh, how to deal with life. Lots of entertainments, lots of great guests, and so much more. Jane says, good night. And we say, uh, see you later. And uh, Avita Zane, Sayonara, Moy Loop. Uh, all the rest, and we wish you a, a wonderful day wherever you're watching around the world. It's always a blessing to have you and you and you and you with us here on JMS Live. We love all of you. And again, we got a lot of things planned and a lot of great episodes coming up. The holidays are here again next week. We're kicking off uh, some holiday season uh, tips and holiday tips and food and wine and all kinds of cool stuff on lifestyle segment episodes of our series. So we got lots planned for you. Lots planned for you. All right, gang, we are going to wrap up here for the day. Two shows for you today. I certainly hope you enjoyed the two shows we did for you today. Isn't that amazing? Two shows on the same day. We've done that a lot lately. It's a lot of talking, but we love it. We love it. We're doing it all for you and connecting with all of you. Be well, my friends. Take care and thanks for watching this episode of the Jim Masters Show Live. I am your host, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time till next time. We'll be back waiting for you right here at home in Lovety Hall on the Jim Masters Show Live. Take care and be well. We'll see you again next time. Cheers. <laughs>